Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to To Be The Man. And of course, we couldn't do it without the Hall of Famer, the greatest of all time, ladies and gentlemen, the nature boy, Ric Flair. Rick, how are you, man? Woo! I'm great, thank you. <laughs> man, I am great, too. Excited to be with you. We have Thanksgiving in the rearview mirror, uh, Christmas right around the corner. How was Thanksgiving, Rick? Thanksgiving was phenomenal. I went to uh, the Queen's place. It is absolutely, God, it's much more than I imagined it would be. It's beautiful. I didn't realize that they had built it from the ground up, very similar to what you're doing with your new place. Yeah. The, the lot was there, but they, they actually, and the house had just started when they when they bought it, so they, they built it, and they were right there for the whole construction. It's phenomenal. Yeah, really in a beautiful area, too. Can't wait to see it. I uh, heard yeah. a lot about it. Some of the folks who uh, helped us, uh, I think, made a trek down there and, and helped out a little bit down there. So can't wait to see how it all shook out. Yeah, it's it's absolutely beautiful. Big, beautiful yard. I mean, and right near that real, she's like one block away from the $5 million homes. Oh, wow. There you go. Yeah, or, yeah, you know, that area right there. That Her other condo is nearby, too. But it's absolutely beautiful. Well, congratulations to her and a shout out to Andrade who uh, recently revealed on social media that he just had surgery for a torn pectoral muscle. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be out a lot four of people months. wondering, uh, what's next for Andrade. W what would you like to see Andrade do when he's fully healed? Are you, were you enjoying what he was doing with, uh, Roosh and all those guys in AEW? I like the stuff with Matt Hardy, but I don't, I think the, I, I don't think that they use them properly myself, but I'm going to be, you know, obviously by it. I think he is a much better singles performer than he is tag match, and um, you know it's it's to be it's to be determined. I don't know. He, that, that I know that's a very sensitive tear. It was a bad tear, so he's he's going to be out a while with it. Well, we're pulling for him and uh, yeah. hope for a speedy recovery. And I guess we should also talk about the other big tag match that happened over the weekend. It was the Survivor Series. They brought back the War Games. Uh, before we got there, we saw your man, AJ Styles, pin Finn Balor in an excellent match that went 18 minutes and 25 seconds. And and did I predict that? Yes, you did. Okay, thank you. Austin Theory, maybe a little bit of an upset. He is your new United States champion. He beat Seth Rollins yeah. and Bobby Lashley in a triple threat for the U.S. title. This is, uh, as Bruce would say, uh, a fresh coat of paint for Austin Theory. I know last week you had predicted it would be Seth Rollins, but yeah. And they're really trying something with Austin Theory. Have you had a chance to see much of his work? What do you think of Mr. Theory? I have. I think he's pretty good. Yeah. I think he has a, a ways to go. I don't think he's in the same same league as Seth Rollins yet. But, you know, he's right. just, hey, to be up there in that position, they're all good. You know what I mean? And he's young. And uh, the only the only way you find out what's going with God is to give him the opportunity. So he's got it now. And we're here. we'll see we're talking about him a year from now. <laughs> that's kind of the way I look at it. The, uh, rather controversial match on the show was Ronda Rousey and Shotzi Ronda Rousey retains in seven minutes and 15 seconds, but there was a little bit of a backlash in more recent days. And it all started with, uh, a campaign to fire Ronda Rousey. Uh, there is a, a, a podcaster out there, JD from New York, who believes that Ronda Rousey is cancer for the SmackDown division. Doesn't think she's a good wrestler. Doesn't think she adds anything to the WWE. I think she's a real big star. And I think anytime you can get a real big star like that, it, it's worth a look. And, uh, I happen to maybe disagree. I, I understand that maybe she's not as good of an in-ring performer. As some of the folks who've been wrestling their whole lives, but boy, she brings a lot of attention. I think to WWE, where do you land on Ronda Rousey? I, I think Ronda's fabulous. And who, who doesn't like her again? Well, there's an online contingent who uh, who really don't enjoy her in-ring work. And so it was actually trending for a while. It was top 10, I think, on Monday to fire wow. Ronda Rousey. And I just I didn't follow that line of thinking. I, I definitely think that she adds something to the overall presentation and an air of believability to the mainstream and whatnot. And uh, it's anytime you get that level of a star on your program on a regular basis, it's got to be a net positive. Oh, I have to agree. I like Rhonda personally. I think, uh, you know, I, sometimes these people need to look at who, who, who she's wrestling against. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're not going to get the same match out of Rhonda every time. 
you know, well, the, the, you know, the, 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 the other the opponents got to be able to carry their weight too. Well, and maybe some for her. I mean, you're maybe the world's best at that. I mean, back in the day, people would say that Ric Flair could have a five star match with a broom, and along the way, you made some really talented performers like Sting and Lex Luger, and not taking away anything away from those guys, but they were young in their career, and you sort of brought them along. Rhonda's had really good matches, uh, with folks like Charlotte and, uh, maybe that's just where we need to be. She's got to be with somebody who's, uh, been around a, a lot longer than her, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it goes hand in hand, but getting back to your point, she brings a lot of notoriety. Yes. She's you know, arguably, and I actually pay a lot of attention to it now because I've become close friends with Juliana Pena, but, um, She's, she's the biggest box office um, uh, female star that they've ever had at UFC. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm including um, the Nunez girl that uh, did, they're trying to get a trilogy set up with her and uh, um, Ju- Juliana, but uh, she's kind of ducking Juliana right now. So, um, um, I, I mean, Ronda was just the biggest star. I mean, I... I I couldn't wait to watch her. Like very similar to me, getting couldn't wait to see Brock. You know what I mean? Totally uh, agree. I, yeah. So I'm. I don't think she's ever going to stop being a star. She's an attraction. She's rounded by rounded by Guy Rousey, and once again, these people online. That, who are they? <clears throat> Next up, I, I, had I, the, I, uh, I, I heard there a chant. We want Sasha. During that's the match. exactly right. Yeah. The. Uh, the Boston Boston mm. crowd was ready for Sasha, and yeah. she posted something over the weekend uh, that was showing you know some wrestling training, and she did hashtag WWE, hashtag AEW, and boy, it got everybody talking about hey, what does that mean? What could this be? And Dave Meltzer said the last he heard apparently was that uh, there was a financial issue, so maybe they're still negotiating. Uh, it would be hard for me to imagine, given the fact that that Hunter is now running the company that Sasha doesn't wind up back with WWE. Would you agree? Absolutely. She wouldn't go there. She'd been in Mexico wrestling too. Yes. I talked to her. I've talked to her a couple of times. And if you um, had to make a bet, you would bet on her winding back up in WWE. Yeah. 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 If she elects to do anything, I, I she looking at outside options. Well, and she's certainly done so well outside of wrestling. You know, you take yeah. a look at just what she did in the Star Wars universe, and mm-hmm. uh, I mean, she could live on that on the on the convention circuit for a long, long time. You know, yeah. between what she's accomplished in the ring and just you know in, in the mainstream. Yeah. So, well, she's so young. I hope that she gets back into business. I mean, you know, it's she, she has plenty of time, but um, and I, you know, to me, I keep telling she's she's a Ricky Steamboat, and Ashley is me. That yeah. doesn't get any better when the two of them work. There's not a better female match ever anywhere, anytime. I totally agree. And if you're not they, necessarily, they, they, I don't, I don't have a problem saying this. They are the two premier female wrestlers that I've ever seen in my entire life. I don't think you'll get much pushback on that. No, I don't. I don't see. They're, they're pushing back. <laughs> they're talking to the wrong guy. We saw uh, Team Bel Air pick up a win at the uh, Survivor Series War Games. It was Bianca Bel Air, Alexa Bliss, Oscar Mayim, and Becky Lynch. They beat Team Bailey, and then the main event. What was last? And man, I don't know what I expected, but I was thoroughly entertained. They went nearly thirty-nine minutes. The Bloodline would beat the Brawling Brutes, which was made up of Sheamus, Ridge Holland, Butch, Drew McIntyre, and Kevin Owens, mm-hmm. and it was all about a story for Sami Zayn. And Sami Zayn is a guy who I think maybe has had his best year ever. You know, he, he certainly exceeded expectations at his WrestleMania match with Johnny Knoxville and the jackass crew. Fun is probably the word to use there, but now what he's done with the bloodline and then the storytelling on this one show, I just think, man, Sami Zayn stock is maybe higher than ever, but it does make you wonder where do they go from here? It feels as if the, the eventual outcome here is going to be Sammy as a massive baby face. Maybe when the bloodline turns on him, how do you see that playing out for Sammy? And, and, and what do you think of the performance? Well, at first I was very open about, it. I didn't even like him being with the bloodline. Yeah. I thought it, I thought he diluted it. 
But I know in sitting and talking with Booker T, it just everybody looked at it differently. I was with Booker T in New York at an autograph session, and Booker thinks the sun rises and falls on the guy. So yeah, um, I just I just for my for looking at Roman and what the bloodline is and how they conduct themselves, I found him way too bring bring way too much comedy to it. But apparently it's worked. So that yeah. just me maybe that maybe that's me being old school. But when you got a serious character like the Usos, who you know are, I don't think I don't even think to argue with the best tag team right now in the business for as heels. The right. Usos that can really, when they're healthy, can really work. And Roman is over like nobody else. And uh, I didn't like it because I thought uh, the the kid's very he, he's comical. His character is comical. Right. Yeah. If it gets heat with me, you can imagine how many of the get it gets heat with the marks. <laughs> <laughs> well there uh is a rumor out there that perhaps uh dur- through the course of that match on saturday in boston the main event of the survivor series during that bloodline war games match kevin owens perhaps accidentally burst the eardrum of roman reigns and uh there was some hurt feelings coming out of that now, that's oh, really? all just been whispers online i don't i haven't spoken to anyone to know for sure that that's what's happened but Things like that, is that, especially with the eardrum, do you remember there being circumstances? We've heard stories about Steve Carino and Homicide and perhaps Greg the Hammer Valentine and Roddy Piper. Um, do you Hell, I've, any- I've, I've had mine broken. Michael Hayes broke mine. Okay. Tell you, us about you, that. You get up and go. <laughs> Christ. It ain't no big deal unless it causes equilibrium problems, which I don't think mine equilibrium problems all those years later came from Michael Hayes breaking mine in Miami. I can remember when he did it. Right. But, I mean, you know, made, times were different. and We didn't take any time off. We went right, to, went right to work. As a matter of fact, I had to wrestle Michael an hour that night. So um, I'm sure he remembers it. <laughs> he broke first thing, in, it was the first cut into the match. Wow. If you don't know, but not by, <coughs> not, not intentionally, but I'm sure it, Knowing Kevin and thinking what a great guy he is, I'm sure Kevin did smack Roman intentionally trying to break his eardrum. Oh, no, I can't imagine that. No. Uh, the other big news last week actually happened the day before Thanksgiving. It was uh, a very special edition of AEW Dynamite from Chicago, and it was really a test because we saw in CM Punk's hometown of Chicago. Yeah. How was AEW going to handle this? We saw a six man tag with the Elite. Of course, that's the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. They were taking on the Death Triangle. We think a lot of the Lucha Bros, and of course, Pac is with them. And man, what a match they had. It's a best of seven series. It sort of feels old school in that regard. You know, like Nikita and Magnum back in the day, except with the volume turned all the way up. But they did a lot of little things in the match to sort of troll CM Punk and, and riled up that hometown Chicago crowd. And the internet, as a result, was convinced, or a lot of folks online, oh, this means CM Punk is coming back. What did you think of that? And uh, I I didn't see it. You and I talked about it. I did not see it. So um, was the crowd chanting, we want Punk? Well, well, and and they were upset with the elite, too. And, And I think it's an interesting time because, you know, in wrestling, everybody wants to believe there's maybe a conspiracy theory. And there's maybe more to it than what there really is. And the elite being, um, um, Kenny Omega and the young bucks. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, I'm curious to see what happens next. I don't think it was any sort of, uh, an invitation for there to be a, a CM Punk return. I, I could be wrong on that. I hope I am. I'd like to see him do more in wrestling, but it doesn't feel that way, but it, it is interesting because it almost feels like on some level, you just want to leave well enough alone, but that's not what happened. And, uh, man, it got everybody talking and you can see there, uh, sort of mocking the whole bite situation from quote unquote brawl out Kenny Omega. Oh yeah. In a bite in the middle of the match. <laughs> I mean, listen, it's I like, I, inside baseball, yeah, there it is. I, I like that. <laughs> I had a feeling you might. Yeah, no, it's, you know, there, there again, like I said, in my, in my opinion, if you do. If you're trying to get rid of a guy and you don't want very you don't want 
if, if they're not going to be there, it's like if Sasha has decided definitely not to be at WWE, they don't want the crowd chanting, chanting Sasha, okay? Right. I, I think my take on this would be if the WWE had a deal pending with Sasha, why would they turn it down? Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. They, they'd want it to be that. And you know what? It, it's up to the girls in the ring that they're chanting to, turn, to, to make the match better. Right. Being Ronda and, and Shotzi, right? Yep. So maybe the match wasn't that good. I didn't see it. But um, if they're chanting just because it's their hometown and, and they have a deal pending, why why would they care if she's chanting? Well, everybody why, was why, chanting this past why, weekend. Uh, it was a big WrestleCade weekend. I know you've enjoyed yeah. some WrestleCade festivities in the past. Winston. No, I mean, do, do, do you agree with that, though, or not? Oh no, for sure. Yeah. Like if you know that somebody's coming back, you want to play into it. Yeah. I don't think everybody thinks that CM Punk is coming back and they sort of played into it. So that's <clears> a lot <throat> of eyebrows. Yeah. And I, and, and the fact that, 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 that I don't think they have a deal worked out like, like I wish they would, cause I'm a big fan of hers. Um, but I think that they had a deal worked out with her that they would want the crowd chanting. We want her, but I should. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because when she hears that, she doesn't have a deal. She's just normal laughing. Because <laughs> she knows she's watching. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So she uh, just. The wrestling world was watching this past Sunday, uh, right after WrestleCade was complete over in Winston Salem. And uh, shout out to all those folks who, who do a great job every year now, 10 years in a row. A bunch of wrestling fans made the trek to Raleigh. North Carolina to the now famed Dorton arena and Ricky, the dragon steamboat returned. They were careful not to call it his last match. Uh, but he, he was back in the ring for the first time in quite a while. I think he originally retired back in 1994. He had a classic with you at spring stampede that year, but later in the year decided he needed to hang it up. Did pop back up for a little bit here and there with ring of honor and WWE with some in ring stuff, but this was his first match back if you will tagging with ftr who we both think a lot of to take on black machismo aka j lethal dressed up like the macho man uh brock anderson who we both think has a bright future ahead of him and a mystery opponent a mystery opponent wound up being nick aldis we'll come back and talk about all this i want to ask did you have a chance to see the ricky the dragon steamboat match i did not and that is not to, to slate anybody i just want it's football season i, I watch football yeah. You know, I do watch, like, I watch um, Raw. I watched Raw last night. I watch SmackDown. I watch AEW if I'm not traveling. Like, this week, I probably won't get to see it because I'm in Miami for three days. But I always watch SmackDown and, uh, and Raw just to see what's going on so that I can have somewhat of an intelligent conversation with you. And, and I watch AEW. I don't watch the Friday show very often, though. Ricky, the dragon steamboat, uh, back in the ring. Were you, uh, were you surprised that, that he, he stepped back through the ropes earlier this year? There was maybe some trepidation about whether or not he felt like he wanted to do that. We saw it happen this past Sunday. Do you think that's probably it for Ricky? Have you spoke to him? Do you think he's got more in him? What would you guess? Um, I have not spoken to him. So uh, I, I don't know the answer to that. I, you know, I spoke to him when, when we were trying to get him to work with us, but you know, he indicated to me back then that he didn't think that health-wise he, he, he was ready to do it. So I'm, you know, it's it, what makes him feel good. It's, it's like I say about myself. I could wrestle again right now, too, and, I, and I'd be better than I, a lot better than I was at the last match because when you're gone away from him that long, you forget about little things that make a difference, and you spend so much time getting in shape for it that you don't think about you know, little things like dehydrating and, you know, beating your nerves. And, yeah. yeah, and I was just, you know, so into the training part of it, I forgot about little things. Um, but um, I think he should do what he wants to do. I mean, he's Ricky Steamboat. There's nobody ever going to yeah. be. I don't think if he won Ricky Steamboat. And, well and, and whether he did good or did bad, it's not going to affect his legacy. He, he, he's the best Bay face in the history of the business. And, that, and, he, and he always will be. The other best baby face in the history of the business maybe did have his last tag team match. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. First, I want to talk about 
the rest of the uh, folks who rounded out the six man tag for Ricky, the dragon steamboats return Dax might be having Dax of FTR might be having his best year of his career. Uh, he's even got another big test this coming week, uh, or I guess it's tomorrow as, as everybody is, uh, or tonight rather, as everybody's listening to this, he's going to be taking on Brian Danielson, oh, Dax good. And Brian Danielson. That's about as old school and fun down and dirty classic wrestling. I'm pumped for that one. I know you'll be in Miami, but I'm going to be glued to the set for that one. Uh, I, I, I may be, cause I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but I'll be, I'll try and watch that. And then of course, uh, I wanted to give a shout out to Jay lethal who man, the little kid in Jay lethal must be having the best year ever. I got, the, drink. I got the greatest Thanksgiving text from him ever. Oh, really? Yep. He said, think about me and my career. I've got the rest of you sting. And now I'm going to be in the ring with steamboat in the same year. In the same year. Yeah. He, he texted me that. Thank you. That's awesome. Man. At Thanksgiving. Yeah. So it was, he's a great kid. I have, I didn't get to see the match. Well, it, it's it, it had got lethal who's really good and FTR was really good and Nick is real good. Probably a lot of pressure on Brock, but I'm I'm glad that that's how you mature and that's how you get better. Absolutely, because you know, it's really not fair to judge anybody that's had like you said 18 matches. So but that's how you, that's how you get better being around guys that have had a lot more ring time. So um, I I didn't get to see the match with the good. Yeah, man, they did a great job. I think it exceeded all expectations. I think everybody who was there in the, in the crowd went home happy. It was just cool to see, uh, the dragon back doing his thing. Yeah, of course. It was really nice to see Nick Aldis. It feels like we've seen Nick Aldis inside the, the WWE or, or NWA rather framework. And so we've only seen like the NWA presentation of Nick Aldis for quite a while Yeah, to see him outside of there for the first time in a while is, is pretty exciting. And now there's lots of debate. I think mm-hmm. everybody knows that he's a, a free agent and he's got uh, maybe a month left. And I think maybe next year he's ready to go wherever. Yeah, and I now hope people so. are wondering, will that be WWE? Will that be AEW? Will that be somewhere else? What would you like to see Nick Aldis do? Oh, I'd love to see him come to uh, WWE. Yeah. All right. I'd be happy to see him go to AEW. I mean, I, you can't go wrong either way. It's just who's going to pay him the most. And then I would, as a, as a talent, he has to look where he thinks he has the best opportunity. Of course. There's a lot of competition right now with WWE in the, in the, in the men's division. I mean, Randy, Randy hasn't come back yet. Cody hasn't come back yet. You've got Seth, Roman. I mean, well, they've got a lot of competition over at AEW, too, with, with um, FTR and, um, God, uh, Omega. I like him as a single lot. I like... Um, Dean Ambrose, I mean, they've, they've got, there's a lot of, Danielson, there's a lot of good talent in both companies. You know, which, which is good for the business, good for the guys that have the opportunity. We, uh, we recently saw some news from Fightful that said that Randy Orton did indeed have fusion surgery on his lower back. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people wondered, does that mean he'll even be able to return? And then I think Bob Orton Jr., Randy's father, did an interview uh, at a virtual signing. And he mentioned that Randy's coming along quote. I see him maybe once a week or so, but he's coming along He'll he be is. Back I, in the I, air before you know it. I talked to him all the time. That's great. Yeah. I, I asked him and talked about the surgery cause I'm, I didn't think you want me to share it, but yeah, he'll be back better than ever. There, well, there's, I'm excited there, about no, there, no, there's a look of a great wrestler. Look at him. <laughs> now, you know, he, he just looks good. I mean, he, he carries himself like, you know, very, I think him and Roma would be huge. I think him and Cody would be huge. I mean, there's some really big matches. Like when the queen comes back, I mean, God, there's, I, I'm pushing for, I, I would like to see Bianca Blair, but I mean, there's some great matches for her too when she comes back. You know, when you're great, like Randy and like the queen are, the, the opportunities are endless. There's always someone that wants to be, to be you or thinks they can be you. And until they are, you know, <laughs> good luck trying. She could she could wrestle till she was a hundred years old. Be better than ninety five percent of the girls there. Wow. I mean, I watch the show. I'm not, it, it's not, not not being critical of anybody. I'm just saying that's how good she is. Same with Sasha. You well, got two. You, the, got uh, two, you got two that just stand out, and it's not 
be, this is not belittling anybody, but not everybody can be Tom Brady. Not everybody can be Aaron Rodgers. Not everybody can be Jimmy Brown. Not everybody can be LeBron James. I mean, there's going to be some that are just better than others. Right. And that's that's just the fact of the way it is in life. Not everybody can be Conrad Thompson. And we got to, and, and that, when they see my documentary, they're gonna say, "For goddamn sure, not everyone can be the nature boy." <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> well, uh, you, you said ninety-five percent a minute ago, and it made me think of another tweet that went pretty viral uh, as we we're recording this four days ago. Glenn Gilberti, the former Disco Inferno, tweeted out: 95 percent of modern-day wrestlers have no clue how to get over." And that created a lot of debate online. I'm curious to get your take on that, Rick. Let me, let me say it again. See what you think. 95% of modern day wrestlers have no clue how to get over. Okay. I'm going to play something for you. Okay. All right. Can you guys see that? What year, what year do you think that was? The man, 1989. I coined the phrase. I am the man. Woo! Diamonds are forever. And so is Ric Flair. That's how you get over. (laughs) 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 Let me see. If in 1989 I was going to myself as a man, let me think. I don't know. What does that that mean? (laughs) Just having fun. Well, we do every I know. I I noticed somebody else has called himself the man again. That just kills me. I wonder who you're talking about. <laughs> so what do you think of this guy saying that, man? Do you agree with that? 95% of modern day wrestlers have no clue how to get over. Well, first of all, disco shouldn't have an opinion. <laughs> 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 Excuse I love me. you for that. I love disco, but no, but here's the, what he, I think probably what he's saying is they don't have to get over it anymore because the company gets you over. Yes, they do. Yeah, it's not up to you to get over like it is in the old days. <clears throat> so it's all really an unfair. You're an unfair advantage because you're not put in a position of get. You're, you're put in a position of learning how to to utilize your skills. The company makes the decision whether you're going to get over or not. Would you agree? Yeah, I mean, listen. If they're behind you, it's going to happen. And if they're not, maybe it's not. That's right. In the old days, if you were so damn good, they couldn't hold you back. You, you went with it, right? Right. Nowadays, the company, the promotion has to get behind you. And if they don't, no matter how good you are, you ain't going anywhere. Yeah. But for the well, most the part. too is, you know. For, for the most part, though, for the most part, if you're good, the company gets behind you. Unless you've got some serious problems with them politically, then why wouldn't they get behind you? It just makes them money. You take a look at like, um, the size of the roster now versus the size of the roster when you were first coming up and getting over, you know, whether it was 81 or 89 or anywhere in between the roster is much larger than it was back then. I mean, you guys used to run shows where you would have 12 guys on the whole damn thing. Some guys would pull double duty, blah, blah, blah. That's just not the circumstance now. No, no. Well, we had, um. In the in the eighties, we had thirty guys on the card. Easy, think about it. a lot of six mans, a lot of tag matches. I, I would say we had at least twenty five to twenty six people on the card back in the eighties. In the eighties, the think idea though that you've got a hundred people at TV, that's tough. Oh no 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 no! I meant we would take on the road. Yes, uh, like the Great American Bash on tour, we'd have we'd have eight matches. So, yeah. how many, uh, so let's say two of them are tags. Yeah, you said like 20, 22, 24 people. Yeah. And of course, nowadays it, it's like, and, and I, I get it why they do it, but it, it's very hard. They, they give everybody a spot on, on WrestleMania um, because they, they, they feel like everybody that's put in the time and the effort to, to get the WrestleMania, whether they're the main event or not, they want to try and make them very happy. And I, I, I commend them for that. It didn't work like that in the old days. You had to be one of the one of the people to get there. Or they had no problem leaving you at home. 
Well, the, uh, the great American bash, the good old days, I can't help, but think about the rock and roll express Yeah, this past weekend. They had what many people believe will be their very last tag match. It was their return to Dorton arena. If that was really it, how fitting that it happened in Dorton arena. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned earlier, Ricky, the dragon steamboat, arguably the greatest baby face of all time. I think a lot of people would put Ricky Morton in that same category. What a phenomenal career. What a phenomenal tag team. What do you think the rock and roll express legacy will be in professional wrestling? One of the top 10 teams of all time. And Ricky Morton, uh, like you just said, one of the top 10 baby faces of all time. Not, nothing against Robert. Ricky just, Ricky just had a different look. He looked more vulnerable. Um, and he just had that, Ricky just had that little arrogant little attitude. I mean, carried himself with a lot of swagger. Does that make sense? And, and I, I guess you're saying this because Robert is hurt badly, right? Well, I don't know all the details. I just know that moving forward, I think Ricky would like to do some tags with his son, who, yeah. uh, Kerry Morton, who recently yeah. became the junior heavyweight champion for the NWA. Mm-hmm. And I think Robert's probably going to take a little time off or maybe enjoy some signings and whatnot. I don't know all the particulars. I, th- I thought he had a real bad ankle, whatever, whatever. I mean, I'm not, I hope it's nothing worse than that, but I just think he needs to heal up. Yeah. So, um, never say never, but they're going to go down as one of the top 10 teams. And, and that's a lot to be remembered as one of the top 10 teams and they're, they're in the hall of fame. Well-deserved, you know, um, I still can't figure out why Conry and Eaton are, but, um, well, you got to think Andre Eaton and Lane are going in with uh, Jim Cornette at some point, right? I, I, but why? Why would they wait so long? Bobby's gone, right? I don't get. They're putting in people left and right that are far less qualified and have done a lot less for the business than they did. Yeah, no doubt. But they weren't WWE guys either, so I don't know how that works. I wish Tony would. Uh, uh, start a hall of fame that would create a lot of interest and do it based on people that he thinks are good in, the, in the history of the business. Yeah. You know I mean, not just guys from AEW last three years. Right. Yeah. That would actually draw a lot of attention if he had his own hall of fame. I think well, that's a good idea. I, I hadn't even considered Tony doing something like that, but well, obviously well, he has the means to do it and the passion to do it. The, the means the past, he loves wrestling and why yeah. not? And he's in a good mood because the Jaguars are playing good. So there you go. How about that? Did you uh, see that? The Jags yeah, beating yeah. the Ravens? I didn't yeah. expect hey, that. Hey, I'll tell you what. The, get, rid, get rid of Urban Meyer was the best thing that ever happened to him. And Doug Peterson's a hell of a coach. And I mean, Doug Peterson won a Super Bowl and because he didn't win two in a row, got fired. That's how football is these days. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it, they walk away with a $10 million buyout. So it's crazy. I mean, I'm wondering, and, and you're a sports fan like me, we're getting away from wrestling. How does Urban Meyer get back on TV after well, all the after all the shit he's been in? Well, if we're going to talk about all the shit people have been in, can you believe that Auburn hired Hugh Freeze? I mean, th- this is a guy who who beat look, Alabama twice. I, yeah, and then he started <laughs> calling the best court services and got fired. He did what? He used the company phone to hire escorts. Has that been proven? That's against the rules, you know. They don't is like that, that. Has that been proven? I don't know all the details. <laughs> I do think it's hilarious that after <laughs> one season. I thought that was Rick Patino at Louisville. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're thinking of a different coach. Who am I thinking of? Patrino. Oh, no, no. Patino. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, I, I thought his name was Bobby Patrino. No, that's that's the coach from Arkansas. I know the he football, is I, the the football coach. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm talking about Rick Patino, the basketball coach at Louisville. I'm with you, but I'm we'll talk about it all fair. It doesn't matter. Uh, Bobby yeah. Petrino and Rick Patino do different things. What Rick Petrino uh, Bobby Bobby is the one that crashed on a motorcycle with a secretary. Yes. <laughs> yes. Let's move along. He make they both make me look damn good. <laughs> I was gonna say by comparison, you know. 
I just think it's funny that Auburn felt like uh, a lot of the boosters after year one felt like maybe. <laughs> if you're going to call a hooker, you got to do it in the house line. <laughs> These are pro tips from the nation boy. At a, at a hotel. <laughs> My goodness. Who even has a home phone? Uh, if you're smart, you do it from a payphone. <laughs> A payphone? Where would you even find a payphone in 2022? Look I don't know. I'd find one if I had <laughs> My goodness. Go, Daddy, you can buy those burners, too. <laughs> yeah. You've been hanging out with the wrong people again. No, right? I've, been watch, I've been watching TV. I'm getting all this new stuff. A burner. Look at you. <laughs> The only burners you know about are Rick Blair and Trip. And by the way, I want to mention, just in time for the holidays, if you haven't already, can I recommend you check out rickflareshop.com? A lot of new stuff just got uploaded. It's the perfect gift for the Rick Flair fan in your life. Wendy, he's plugging rickflareshop.com. You got coloring books, you got media, you got posters, you got home accessories. You need a hat, you got hats. Uh, you, you want some limited edition prints, you got that. You need t-shirts, hoodies, what are you looking for? It's all available now at oh, rickflareshop.com. Holy cow, Wendy's plugging you hard. <laughs> and look, there it is right there. There's a new order coming in from rickflareshop.com. <laughs> Don't forget, if you go ahead and get your order in right now, it'll be under the tree in time for Christmas. That's rickflareshop.com. And uh, before we get into our topic today, because we're having a lot of fun talking about current stuff, I do want to squeeze in a little bit of our topic. But I wanted to bring up one more last thing about current stuff. There was a bit of a debate this past week about what has been the biggest story in wrestling this year. Is it the return of Stone Cold Steve Austin to the ring? Is it the press conference and the brawl after All Out that we call Brawl Out with CM Punk and the Elite? Or is it Vince McMahon retiring? In my opinion, it's kind of a landslide. It's Vince McMahon. Yes. The scandal and then stepping away. That yes. might be the biggest story in decades in wrestling. What say you? <clears throat> well, I would say until you brought that up, it, hands down, it'd be Steve Austin, but that itself with Vince trumped it all. So nobody saw it coming and I don't know where. I'm um you know, I'm a, I'm very I'm heartbroken that he's not there anymore. I mean I I don't know I don't I don't know the story. I don't know any more than you do, but I just know that he lived and loved that business. I, and yes. I, I hope that he's, you know, finding his way without it. Cause when you put so much time into it, I mean, I know how it, it's still hard for me to walk away from it. I mean, I still like to watch it. I still like to be part of it. I'm looking forward to going, uh, to the 30th and to the 30th anniversary. And by the way, of course, social media screwed that up. I have not been invited to the rumble. I'm going. <laughs> God, I am going. I'm going to San Antonio to sign autographs separately with Fitterman the day of the Rumble. Yes, <laughs> I'm not. I was not invited to the Rumble. However, if they want me to put my gear on like a last match and yeah, you know, I'm, listen I'm, to you. <laughs> little surprise number thirty. <laughs> yeah, why not? And a roof would blow off. Woo -woo. <laughs> Our topic today. Da -da! <laughs> <laughs> oh you, my gosh. Can you get a robe made by then? <laughs> you know I can. And I got one hanging on the wall right here. That people have seen on A and E. Uh, let's talk about our topic today. We've got 20 minutes left or so in our show. We always try to go about an hour and, uh, I know you love talking about the current stuff, but I want to give a little love and talk about one of the greatest of all time. He was the guy who was leading the charge on the other channel. Of course, we're talking about Hulk Hogan. Yep. And when you think about classic old school professional wrestling, most of the folks listening to this, think about the 1980s. And there's been a lot of analogies out there over the years, but you really had two sides of the coin here, the WWF and all the glitz and glamor, and maybe a more cartoonish approach that uh, it was aimed at kids for action figures and lunch boxes and sleeping bags and all that. And then on the other side, you had the NWA and everybody knows that the, the, the king of the NWA back then was the nature boy, Ric Flair. And you guys were really the icons of the 1980s. And then it finally happened 1991 
you guys get to square off, but that's not the first time you met Hulk. When's the first time you met Hulk Hogan? 79 Atlanta TV. He was a sterling gold on his way to uh, Memphis. <clears throat> and that's before you actually became the world champ too. So you're still on your ascent and you guys are just trying to make a name for yourself and you cross paths in 79. Wow. How yeah. about that? Yeah. Uh, it was 79. I'm pretty sure we can check with, him. I talked to him quite a bit. So we just live, we, we live, live 40 miles apart, but it, it's that damn going across that causeway and that, but he's got, he, he's doing well. I just bought another home and, uh, he's got a new girl and he's, you know, I, I, I hear different stories, but as of recently, he's in much better health than he has been. That's great. But by that, I mean, I think he's. His back is a little bit better than that. I don't mean health wise, like internal problems, but that his arm. He back just had a is, bunch of back surgeries, right? Yeah, terrible. Ten, I think ten, not one, not two or three, but ten over the last probably five years. <clears throat> it's crazy to think about, you know, what he uh, put his body through because those those WWF rings people have talked about for years were just yeah. so damn hard, and and you wrestled in rings from. Japan to Australia to Jim Crockett promotions to Vince McMahon's WWF people would say that that ring was by far the hardest. It was almost like falling on concrete Saint and to Louis. do that at 300 Saint, pounds, St. Louis, St. Louis had the harder ring, hardest ring in the world. Wow. Yeah. St. Louis, you kill yourself. Dory Funk Jr. Told me, so you want to get over in St. Louis, take bumps because Harley races it. Only one that does it <laughs> to truth. Take a slam off the top and that ring is it, like landing on cement. Oh God. And and but you look back on over the history of it, that's that was the greatest thing Dory could have told me. Because while you got on it, you went, Holy Christ. And I can remember remember Jerry Blackwell? Yeah. And what do they call that? The Samoan drop where like Kurt, you know, Kurt does it too, right? Where they put you on their shoulders and then drop back with you. Yeah. That, that Jerry Blackwell, that was his finisher, right? Yeah, I, I swear to God, he gave me in the St. Louis ring. I thought it killed me. I'm not kidding you. That much, that that's how hard that ring was. Wow. And, Jer and Jerry was about 400 pounds. So to do that at, at, at Hogan's weight, the leg drop, oh, all those years, I mean, every match in with a leg drop, the compression on the spine, it's probably no wonder that he's yeah. had to have all these surgeries on it, his back. Yep. But you want to talk about box that, that, that That's what he gets for beating everybody. I love you for that. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to you. And ain't from and it ain't, it ain't from taking backdrops. I can assure you that. <laughs> well, that's fair. <laughs> hey, I tell him that too. I said to Steve, what the hell can you have a bad back for, man? All you do is take a fly of air from me. <laughs> <laughs> Were you uh I mean he, much like a lot of guys in that era, enjoyed his first success for the AWA. Mm -hmm. And Hulkamania really started there. And then, of course, it went to New York and Vince McMahon just set it on fire. When you're watching, you're the top dog of the NWA. And it's almost even hard to imagine because you take a look at current NWA and current WWE. But once upon a time, the NWA was the premier organization. Oh, and the away. WWF was just a territory. But boy, with Vince McMahon and Hulk Hogan working together, that changed pretty quickly, did it not? Yeah, but you know the real story is that he he sold out. He and Nick Bogwigo sold out the big building they used in in Minneapolis territory at that time was the St. Paul, uh, the brand new building with like a Tim Rules player, whoever it is. I, I don't know where they play now, but back then the big building like held like eighteen thousand. They sold it out three times. They wouldn't put the belt on Hogan. And Hogan just got mad, and he went to Japan. And while he was in Japan, um, Vince contacted him. So he went back to Minneapolis and said, I want I want the merchandise. I want all this stuff, you know, that he knew he would get. If he went. And Vern said no, and he just left. Never right. came back. But you can't, you can't blame Hulk for leaving, my God. No. Go with money. Is. I mean, it's a hard business. But, and you think it's tough now. Back then, can you imagine we had merchandise? We didn't have any merchandise. We didn't know how to do that. Right. The four horsemen, what kind of merchandise would we have had then? I mean, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. crazy. Same with Steamboat or, or 
Magnum TA hat or Dusty, my God. Who wouldn't have a Dusty T-shirt? You know, right. you know what I'm saying? And so I can't blame Hulk at all for that. And Hulk's a smart. One thing Hulk is, is a very smart businessman. And he, he used to say to me all the time, brother, it's not about who's the best worker, but who makes the most money. Well, there you go. Well said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a great saying. Not about who's the best worker, it's about who makes the most money. It's a great saying. When you're taking a look at the phenomenon that the WWF creates with Hulkamania and the LJ in action figures and the Saturday morning cartoons, Saturday night's main event on NBC and then WrestleMania, are you, is there a tinge of what if, or jealousy on your side? Like, man, I could do that. Why am I not there? No. I, you know, being the NWA champion was still, uh, if I looked at the group of guys that I knew the best, including guys like DiBiase that were up there in that, they all would have died to be the NWA champion. Okay. I mean, you got to look at the guys that have worn it. I mean, Terry and Dory, Jack Briscoe, Gene Kaniski, Buddy Rogers, Harley Race, Dusty. I mean, shit. You know, I, I mean, it's, it's a different time, and it was, and it was a, even though it was a vote, it was a legitimate vote. Right. You know, who was the best? Who could, who couldn't, you know, it was like, who, who can we trust to work every day of the week, every day of the month, every month of the year? Sometimes twice on Saturday, sometimes twice on Sunday, and wrestle an hour every night. That's a, big that's a great, that's the greatest compliment you can ever get. Yeah. I don't give a shit what anybody thinks. I don't. My, I don't got to tell my story walking or getting people that understand what the business was about. And they're historians like Taker and Austin and people like that. They get it. They know. Yeah. It was hard to be in the world champion, but it was the greatest honor in the world. And well, you some, finally get your and, opportunity. And, and, and in some towns there were good-looking women, and in some towns not too good-looking. Oh my gosh! But th they were women. <laughs> <laughs> I had two titles of hold. <laughs> Good lord! Oh, well, uh, he, he woo! <laughs> he came to town. God damn did he ever! <laughs> Those Broadways were happening in the afternoon and the evening. Uh, who who was that masked man? <laughs> <laughs> Sting. Now Sting. Pete. Uh, we finally get to see you square off against Hulk Hogan. And I think a lot of folks just remember going to the, the grocery store with their mom, or at least I do. And you see the newsstand and all those different after mags, as we call them, yeah. you've got all these fantasy matches. What if this guy fought that guy? And I mean, it happened like clockwork, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90. It was always, what if Ric Flair wrestled Hulk Hogan? We finally get to see it in 1991. It's October 22nd at a goddamn house show in Dayton, Ohio, the Hera yeah. arena, which unfortunately yeah. is no longer with us, but yes, that's the, the same building. We saw ECW run pay-per-views. Mm -hmm. They hosted the first ever Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan match. Mm -hmm. And then three days later, we did it again in Oakland, California. Yep. Uh, and, and then we did it at the, uh, LA sports arena on the 26th. Yep. The 27th, we did it in Tempe, Arizona, and we wouldn't try it again, uh, uh, until November where we would try it in Pittsburgh. We tried it in Milwaukee. We tried it in Moline and Champaign, Illinois. We tried it in Denver. We tried it in Cincinnati and it starts to feel like we're doing this match over and over and over, but we never see it on TV. Like these are all house shows. These are all live events. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you, I'm curious. What was it like to finally be in the ring with Hulk? Did you oh, feel the emotion great. from the crowd? Did it feel like a big uh, deal? Yeah, it was huge. I had been in the ring with the guys that were as over as Hulk, but not as over um, on a national basis like him. Does that make sense? Yes. Wrestling Kerry Von Erich in Dallas, it was, that was about as high as you can get. Or wrestling Steamboat in Charlotte or... Greensboro or anywhere in the Middle Atlantic, right? Wrestling Dusty in Atlanta, huge. I mean, or Miami, or I mean, I'd been in, in, in some big, really big time guy over matches, but um, I got to admit, when Hogan's music hit, like in Chicago and that, it was it was insanity, and it was so easy. 
We had really good chemistry. Took us about three matches to figure it out. He told me he didn't press slam like Luger and I. He gave me, tell me, he gave me his side of the story and I gave him mine. And I said, hey, I'll do whatever, whatever you want. I'm, I'm very limited. I just chop a guy, I drop a knee in his head. I cut myself and I, I'm easy to get beat. I'm easy to beat. Right. <laughs> we got along great. And we'd be at house shows and the show would be running late. He'd holler at me, room service. I mean, we got this, we, we got to throw, throw me in right in the middle of the match, give me the boot, drop a leg, we go home. And we'd make time for room service at the hotel. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, only, I, I only jumped him one time. He came to St. Louis one time. Uh, he, would, he didn't have the belt, and I was the NW champion. And we went, went out to the same bar, and oh, yeah, <laughs> I won. <laughs> You. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know what to say here. <laughs> Just say, mother-in-law. <laughs> I went, hey, you, Mir Hogan. You nature boy. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> Ask him. <laughs> that, I, uh, AW, that AWA shit wasn't cutting it in St. Louis. <laughs> I just love the idea of you guys finally getting in the ring together. Yeah. And of course, we all anticipated, well, this is going to happen at WrestleMania. And of course, it didn't happen at WrestleMania. But what stuck out like a sore thumb to me is, is we would see you guys do this match all over the country. And perhaps I would just think, man, the Omni, when you guys do this in the Omni, you're going to have people hanging from the rafters. We see a photo there of when it happened in Madison square garden, but the, the Omni that feels like old, you know, Jim they, they, promotions territory. They, they, they didn't buy it. 4,500 people showed up to the Omni uh, to see Rick Flair versus Hulk Hogan. You, you know crazy. what? It, it, no, it's because they just wouldn't, they wouldn't. We used to have to put sound bites in. He, he and he won't be upset that I'm saying this. We had to put sound bites in, in uh, at center stage, because they booed him out. Oh, the the local fans they weren't Hulk Hogan people. No, no, no. Okay. But you know, the first time we really got him to boo me, and and it worked and it's great. And I didn't know that that pay per view was what launched Nitro. Since then, Hulk have told me. Of course, Eric would never tell me that or pay me rightfully, was the match we had in Orlando with Shaq and me and Sherry against him and Jimmy. And I do think we had a good match that day. It was entertaining. It's never going to be, you know, like a, a technical, not going to be me and Steamboat or Seth and Manny or whatever. You know what I mean? It's not nearly as technical, but we had great chemistry. Sherry added so much to it. And that pay-per-view is what launched Nitro. Yeah. Did you know that? Yep. You've told me that here on the show before. Yeah. Then I didn't know it till Hogan told me. It's crazy. But, to but, think. but he was, but in that, in, in that instance, he was, that was the first time that he was a, a, a real legitimate Bay face and I was right. the heel, but it took us a while to get there. The, uh, the first matchup, as we mentioned, Dayton, Ohio, October 22nd, 1991. When you come back and you do it in uh, Oakland, there's 13,400 paying fans to see Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair in Los Angeles. There's 12,400 to see the match. When you go to Tempe, Arizona, there's only 5,600. And I, I don't know. It's just amazing to me to think about this thing. Wasn't a bigger hit on the road. I can't, because, I can't because, because, because nobody knew I was out there. We didn't have we didn't have the saturation from from cable, Turner's cable wasn't nearly what it is today in terms of saturation. They didn't know who I was. I don't Champaign, that, Illinois, sixty three hundred fans. Uh, Denver, Colorado, sixty four hundred fans. Cincinnati, six thousand fans. Boston, well, you didn't do it in Boston. That was you and Piper. I'm just saying. It, no, no, these, bo no. Bo Boston was sold out the night for the Royal Rumble. The, uh, oh, 1992. That's what I wanted to mention. 6,000 folks uh, in Hamilton 
uh, up in uh, Ontario. That that's a good know, crowd. That, that's a good crowd for Hamilton. The uh, you're exactly right though. You and Hogan had a fifteen thousand person sellout January eighteenth in Boston. Yep. Uh, do you remember? Do any of those matches stick out? I think the first one, maybe it was in Oakland. It was either in Oakland or or, or Dayton. It was like title versus title. You had the big gold belt. He had the winged eagle title, and it looked like they were going to make you the ch- the winner. You hold up both belts, then they reveal it's a dusty finish. The belt didn't really change hands. Yeah. What was the reaction when you guys pulled that angle and you held up both belts? Longtime wrestling fans had to be like, "I can't believe my eyes here." Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, it got over, but like I said, the problem. I, I'm the first to admit this. I never was a big card in New York. Okay. I mean, I just wasn't. I didn't have enough TV. Now, if you put me in that situation now, I mean, I thought I, I was much, I was over much better when I was in my mid fifties there than I was when in ninety two because Turner's TV, Turner's TV was Ohio, anywhere from Miami all the way to Charlotte to Baltimore to Philadelphia. After that, it was it was we were very lame. That's why when we went started going to uh, to vault to Philadelphia to the small arena, they 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 would sell out the Spectrum. We would sell out the small arena. Does that makes sense. We couldn't get yeah. in the Spectrum, or we would have, because but we had you know, we all would meet together. One of the few times they're near, we cross paths. Of course, we sold out the Pavilion in Chicago. They sold out Rosemont. I mean, so right. But as, as, in, in all fairness to, to Hogan. I was not over on their TV at all when we first started. And I think that disheartened them a little bit in terms of maybe the the WrestleMania thing, but I just wasn't over in California. I mean, the first time we went with Crockett, we sold out all those buildings. Second time, half the crowd. Unbelievable. I can remember them all. We took it, war games out there and everything, and yeah, we we drew enough money to keep. But like, like I've said a thousand times, you've heard me say it. We should have stayed. We should have stayed east of the Mississippi. Yeah. Not that we'd be in business now, but I mean, it would have been in business a lot longer. Well, I uh, I want to ask this because a lot of old school wrestling fans discuss it all the time. Uh, you're regarded as being one A or one B, greatest of all time in ring performer. Of course, people throw around Shawn Michaels' name as the other part of that equation, but they often take shots at Hulk Hogan and say, "Oh, he couldn't do this, he couldn't do that." Hulk Hogan loyalists would say, "Hey, did you see his work in Japan? That dude could wrestle. It just wasn't necessary for him to be a top card in the WWF." You were in the ring with him. What was the truth? How was Hulk in the ring? Great. He didn't have to do all that shit. Yeah. And Japan was a war. By the way, Japan was was a good payoff. Of jam. J- Japan, you were fighting every night. Right. When he and I were going there in the 80s, was, you think I like? I like wrestling Jumbo. And I, I mean, I don't like wrestling uh, Tenru and Fujinami and that, but wrestling Jumbo was a, a full-fledged fist fight. Right. For an hour. And he was an Olympic caliber wrestler. I couldn't do anything with him, but he couldn't beat me up. I mean, I'm not, I'm not implying that, but I couldn't. I can't. I can't beat a six foot four guy. Uh, I think he won a bronze medal in Greco and in, in Greco, but he threw me around like a rag doll. But uh, it was a fight. I mean, it, it, you know, we made money and we had fun and we drank beer. But it, uh, Tenru, Muda, guys like that were great. But for every one like that, it was a guy that was a very difficult in the ring with. They don't like to sell. Right. Well, we love us some Hulk Hogan on this program. Without Hulk Hogan, I don't think I would be a wrestling fan. I don't think I would be doing oh, this God. podcast or no you. Hey, we, we owe we owe him and Austin and guys like that. I mean and Vince. I mean, we owe them all owe them a lot. Even though I I'm pissed off at Eric. You know, everybody wants to think there was animosity with me and Hulk. Hulk didn't sign my checks. Right. Eric did. You know, that I got, Eric fucked me every time he turned around. And when he sees my documentary, he is still a prick in it. Oh, I, wow. You have no bet. Oh, he's, a, he's still a prick. He's an arrogant prick. We gotta, I can't wait to put you guys together. We need to do a star cast and just do a no, no, clear no, bitch off no, the no, you, you got to see what he says to me in, in this. I mean, and then they go, 
He said a lot of good things, Rick. Well, this this kind of fits the, the, the narrative. I said, yeah, it sure did. It's dead on. <laughs> it's, it's, he's, he's just a prick. I'd love to do it one-on-one. I can't believe it. Michigan dominated OS. Oh, God, I told you. I Listen, told you. I oh. wanted. I was pulling for Michigan. I was glad it happened. I'm really well, happy that uh, as we're talking now, the AP has Alabama above Tennessee. Everybody wants to know what's going to happen. Of course, the playoffs are going to be here before we know it, and there's a lot of great football. We 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 need Al. We need LSU to beat Georgia. Then Alabama's back in. Alabama plays Michigan, who's going to be ranked number one if they do it the right way tonight, not goddamn Georgia, who barely beat Georgia Tech. We we didn't beat Ohio State. We With our best running back out. Yeah, you dominated them. Coral, dominated. They need to be ranked number one. Paul, if my mom can kiss my ass. Yeah, well, I agree with that. Yeah. There you see Georgia, a 17-point favorite for the SEC championship I know, game. I know, but at LSU, if they play them tough, then Alabama's back in. Kirby, Kirby Smart don't acknowledge me. I don't, I don't acknowledge him kiss my ass he lost me when he lost herschel when <laughs> when georgia when sophia graduated and, and herschel quit going to the games i he lost me <laughs> well listen i can't believe this is real but uh the one thing we can always count on when it comes down to football to sit down and watch some football is woo wings rick has his very own they're all coming time. soon yep. Come on now, Uber Eats and Postmates app. You can find it right now in Nashville, San Antonio, How Charlotte. How can you eat chicken wings and have guns like that? Holy shit. Oh. L.A., Lusa, Huntsville, Concord, Richmond Hill. It sounds like Ric Flair's on tour because he is. Check out RicFlairWings.com. It's a virtual restaurant, and they're looking to partner with major metros, Atlanta, St. Louis, Raleigh, Charleston. Tell your favorite bar or local restaurant you want Woo Wings. And to check out rickflairwings.com for more information. But if you're in any of those other cities, pull up Uber Eats, pull up Postmates today, and check out Woo Wings. And we'll Woo be Wings. back next <laughs> week, right here with the Nature Boy and my man Conrad. On to be the man. Woo! Rick Flair drip go woo on a bitch. Woo! <laughs>